So where is the market headed? That's the big question we always get and nobody has the exact answer, but we do have some things that we can look back on to give us a predictive idea of where the market might be headed. We're going to share with you today exactly what we've seen in the past, where we are today, and where we might be headed. All right, so I have to be honest, this is some of the things that really get me excited because um, you know, we can't tell exactly what's going to happen in the future, but when we look back, we can begin to see some patterns and some things we're doing. Joined today by Price Rainer, owner, one of the owners of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Beach Properties of Florida. Um, and man, one of the best things that I really enjoy um, about spending um, time like this with you, Price, is, is the layers that we peel back on the onion, so to speak, of kind of what we've seen in the past and really being a student of history so that we can kind of get a good idea of where we might be headed. So I know there's a number of things that you follow, the things we're going to do. We're going to dive into exactly where the numbers are, um, some of the things that are kind of starting to line up potentially with what we've seen in the past. Share with us a little bit about kind of some of the things that you look at, some of the, maybe some of the material that you study and that you kind of keep an eye on. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, Jimmy, I mean, we just, we look at, you know, average price and of, of a detached single family home. That's kind of our <clears throat> linchpin, our barometer of the 30 right. market. That, that's what everything today, when we, when we talk about stuff, that's going to be kind of our reference point, mm -hmm. you know. And then in, in addition to that, you know, I'd like to look at just what's happening in macro, kind of what's happening in the world of economics and finance. And, and something that's helped me quite a bit over the last couple of years is, uh, is a friend recommended a book to me. It's called The Secret of Banking and Real Estate written by Philip Anderson and it's a uh, kind of unpacks uh, real estate and its cycles um, going back to about 1800 mm. and, and it takes that and he's come up with a, a kind of a, a theory based in fact by breaking down these markets and their cycles that the average real estate market lasts about 18 years and uh, and in that uh, it's about 14 years on average of ascending prices and four years of descending a correction. And, uh, you know, some people may ask, they may say, well, well why 18 years? Mm -hmm. When well, that back a long, some time ago, they, they realized that, uh, that an asset compounded 5% interest annually doubles in 14 years. Mm. So they found that to be quite interesting as to, you know, you know how that kind of gets to our peak and then and then we and then we recede from there and 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 and, and that 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 dip is is largely driven by the amount of leverage or credit that's created during the ascending part of uh, the market. That's something we'll talk about a little bit uh, as well, because it's uh, interesting how that is playing out or not playing out as much as it has in the past in our market over the last uh, you know, eight or nine, 10 years. Yeah, I think it's one thing for us to talk about it. I'm very visual. So let's go to the charts and really sure. take a look at what this looks like. Yeah. So let's talk about this chart we're seeing here, Price. This is kind of the really the main chart that they work off of, I, mm -hmm. I believe. And so mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about what this looks like and what this is a typical pattern. Sure, sure. Well, what we have there on the two axes, just to kind of give us an overview, the first is valuation. So for us, that's going to be a detached single family home is, is kind of what, what we're going to reference there. And then time uh, across the horizontal axis there are going to be years. So as you see there, it marks 14 years of growth, four years of decline. And they break this down into four sections, the first of which is the stealth phase. And you'll see above that where it says smart money at the very top, close to valuation there. So if we were to look back over the last cycle and say that this starts in 2009 or 10, and then we have, you know, about, if we take these, these, these four sections and call them three and a half or four years of time per section, you know, so you had from 2009 or 10 to 2012 or 13 being that stealth phase. That's where we saw a lot of smart money enter the market. And if we remember, uh, you know, there was so much cash that entered our market during that time period. And that were people that took advantage of the depressed prices and just piled cash in here. And then we begin to see from there a period in which the market begins to take off. That's in the awareness phase, when now people are beginning to hear out there that people have bought real estate, seen some appreciation or building equity, and more and more people begin to enter the market. 
So during that time, we see prices begin to accelerate a little bit and uh, as more novice investors start to enter the market, we begin to see a little bit of the use of leverage and uh, particularly we saw a lot of people buying rental properties and things of that nature that were entering the market at that point. All great time to do that. Fundamentally, the numbers worked and heck still work uh, depending on how much cash you put in and your expectations. So with that, we begin to enter a little bit of a bear trap is what they call this. This is a, what, what we like to call the mid-cycle dip. And we saw that here in uh, 16 and 17, and we'll show you that on a spreadsheet here in a little bit, where, where, where prices begin to flatten out. We actually saw a slight decrease, but we can explain that decrease to you and why we saw that. But as we move through this bear trap, we begin to uh, enter a more a period of where pricing begins to move up a little more aggressively and we begin to get a bit more media attention, a bit more enthusiasm in the market. There's more just the general public is starting to enter the market and talk about what a great market it is. And then we begin to see a little bit of greed enter the market as we move towards this peak. And this section here, this three and a half year, year period here roughly is the mania phase here you, you know where I just call it a period of exuberance where, where people get really excited about real estate and we begin to see the average prices move up more quickly than they have and, and a good barometer of that is looking back there's a little blue line here that moves you know it's moving up gradually from left to right and that's called the mean line you know here Along 30A, the, if we go back over the last 20 years and, and work for the average of the mean appreciation over those 20 years, it's been 5.46%. That is uh, significant to me because that is very close to the 5% referenced in the book. So, so I really like how that kind of lines up. That gives me a good sense that our mean prices or, or it, you know, give us a good kind of base of where the market could be if moving along at a healthy pace. So you see this kind of just to touch on this in the bear trap in a typical situation. It's almost like it comes back and comes back. Very yes, close to that. That is correct. It moves closer to the mean. We have a little cooling off period where pricing tracks back to the mean. And then we begin to see, you know, what they would say in statistics. They would say it is a deviation from the mean. You can begin to quantify that deviation. We won't get into that today, but you can have percentages that it deviates from the mean to say how far out of whack things are getting. But we can just look at this picture graphically and, or, or this picture here and see how far that black line begins to move from that. That blue line. It gets a very long way away at its top where you may hear people start to talk about a new epoch or a new paradigm in real estate. That's when people are really drinking the Kool-Aid there. <laughs> and uh, and, and, and we, then we see the, the, the tipping point of the new paradigm and pricing begins to fall where we see a a steep drop then what one might call kind of a dead cat bounce where it bounces back up down to the left there and then and then starts its free fall in the blow off phase you know here you know everything is relative again back to the amount of leverage or credit that's been created during the ascending part of the, mic, uh, the, the market that will determine how far the market has to correct you, you know because cash really doesn't is patient it doesn't have to correct those people that have taken debt you know they have to make payments so, so they may be a bit more impatient I'm not saying they will be they just could be a bit more impatient causing this steep you know or a steeper drop there none of these look the same this is just an average of what it might look like and um, and just a good thing for us to just begin to get our minds around it never happens exactly the same no one's saying we know what's going to happen we're just looking back over history and trying to let it help guide us as to how we make decisions going forward because history largely repeats itself yeah there are different causes and conditions those things we want to be mindful of so we will continue to watch and just kind of pick through the market and read the tea leaves as you will to kind of help us determine where we are in any particular cycle and what has a a probability of happening and based on certain things happenings 
happening, it will increase the probability of other things happening. So we just kind of try to approach it from that perspective using, you know, this type of information, average price, days on the market, you know, the number of sales and credit creation as the things that help us to know where we are in any particular cycle. All right, so, so this is a real good overview of kind of what we see typically in a typical, this is not exact obviously, but it starts showing some patterns that we can begin to see. I know you've been talking about this for three or four years now and we were just like, I don't know how this accelerates, I don't know how these things happen and now here we are, we're beginning to see some of that acceleration. So what I really want to do is, is let's go back to our local chart, let's go back to our local numbers and let's really dig in on kind of what those numbers look like and kind of where these patterns may be forming. So Price, tell us a little bit about kind of what we're seeing right here, what these um, numbers are to get us a little better feel of kind of what we're basically sure. seeing. Sure, Jimmy. W what we're looking at on the, on the left hand, the vertical axis there, that, that is the year. And that, that starts with the zero represents the year 2000. And then it goes each year, you know, thereafter, you know, in sequence. 2001 to the bottom left hand corner is 2020. Across the horizontal axis, we have the number of sales. Those are detached single-family home sales in sections 17 and 18. That area is, rep is, is everything south of Highway 98, and all along 30A, they're in the number of sales column. And, and then you have the percentage change uh, in the next column to the right. The next column after that is the average price of a single family detached home. We have the percentage of change, the price per square foot, its percentage change, the cumulative day on, days on the market uh, on average, the percentage change, the median price, and we've used that 5.46 number to kind of get us our baseline or the median price, average price. They're based on using the year 2000 as our benchmark and applying an appreciation rate or growth rate of 5.46 each year thereafter. That's kind of an outline or an overview of what this chart um, you know, consist of. And, and, and then when we go from there, you'll, you'll notice that some key points going back historically is beginning to look in the number of sales. You'll see where the first year in 2000 was 230 homes sold. We reached a peak in 2004 of 622 homes sold. There in 2006, 168 homes sold. So that's all that sold that year and heck, Largely, most of those were the first half of the year. We had very few sales in the second half of that year, if memory serves. Then, each year thereafter, we begin to see the number of homes grow, 239, 277, and so on, till we get to 2014, where we had 777 home sale. 2015, a very nice jump there to 890. Then we begin to see a bit of consolidation there uh, for the five years after 2015. So 890, 889, 1013, 965, 1074, and so far through July 1st of 2020, we sold 534, which that is the first half of the year. If I double that, uh, interestingly, it comes out to 1,074, the exact same number as 17. So we're really beginning to get, you know, a very nice, solid number of sales each year. Uh, really, really happy about that. But my, what growth we've seen since 2006, where we only sold, you know, uh, 168 homes. Now we're, you know, 1,000, you know, 900 to 1,100 homes a year. So man, our market has really come a long way. Now moving to the next column. Before, before yeah, we go to yeah, that, if yeah, you don't sure. mind, let's talk a little bit about, because we do see these times of where we see increase of number of transactions specifically, I want to talk to that. Mm -hmm. 2010, we had um, obviously um, the addition of the airport in free, uh, over in Panama City, yes. um, which gives us, you know, we were such a drive-in market prior mm -hmm. to that. Yes. So when you look at 387 transactions in 2010, June, you have that, the new airport opens, and then mm -hmm. VPS, mm -hmm. Destin Airport, they call it, mm -hmm. Valparaiso, mm -hmm. you know, it has had to compete. Mm -hmm. And so they had to redo everything they had. They began to attract new carriers. So now all of a sudden, we've got people coming in each year increasing on these transactions, a lot of this is, is driven by people that now have access to a market that had not had it before. Yes. So, you know, when we're going to talk a little bit more about the infrastructure things, mm -hmm. 
the infrastructure items that help growth and that help those things, which we'll talk a little bit more about in there, specifically to transactions, the ability for people to have access to our market has been a dr dramatic difference in the number of transactions. So just want to touch on that because a lot of times we'll see this and we'll see, my gosh, it looks like, you know, we, it, we, we've gone in two and a half times, you know, growth in the number of transactions. And a lot of that is, is I like to tell people, you almost have to have fresh wood on the fire to keep a fire burning. Well, where is that new wood going to come? Because it came from the Southeast. All of our buyers were Southeast United States buyers up until 2010. Since then, now we have Midwest buyers. Now we have Northeast buyers. Now we have people from other regions. And so that could be leading us obviously into another opportunity here. Yes, that, 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 that is uh, you know, valid. And there's also in there is we at that same point in 2010 and 11 begin to have product that we've never had before. We begin That's to right. have Nature Walk and Watercolor Phase 5 and other phase very desirable, yeah, 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 thank you, Phase 4, um, th that were very desirable, well-designed floor plans at a very attractive price point. Right. We've never had that before. So that helped keep our price kind of in check and, and allow the number of sales to increase uh, the way it has. And then I would also say that in you know, 14, 15, 16, and so forth, we've had Water Sound Origins and right. DR Horton has, has also back earlier in the cycle as well, created a lot of product that, that, that we just didn't have in the previous cycle in right. three, four, and five that really put so much pressure in terms of price on the few homes that we had here. So we have much more available product and a much wider spread or, of pricing and number of products within the different pricing segments. So it gives us the buyer a lot more options and we're able to accommodate more buyers where we couldn't before. So we're, we, we're kind of benefiting twofold by, you know, there, there's the people, which is one of the P's I like to key on. Then there's product and there's pricing. Those are the kind of three P's I try to look at when studying a market. Yeah, now let's talk about price because mm -hmm. when we're looking at the average price here, we begin to see some patterns also. And we're going to go back to the chart just a little bit to show how this lines up for us. Sure. But let's just talk about kind of where we are. If we're starting in sure. 2000 with an average price of $426,112, you want to take it from there. Sure, sure, sure. Well, I mean, you're, you're there and then the price went down a little bit to 408 and then it starts to grow in 2 to 477 and then three to 515, and then we see, you know, one of the largest increases probably ever in real estate. You know, you have, uh, it goes to 891, 460, a 73%, a little bit over 73% increase in the average price of a detached single family home from three to four, then five was about a 21% increase, 625, almost 26%. And what's interesting there in 06, the average price is a million three six and change. And so we look at that, and then what I find to be interesting is when I pop down here to 2020, I see an average price of a million three eight and change. So we have kind of tested that old high of 2006 and broken through that. And we've done it with momentum, which we'll talk about yes, in a minute. Yes, yes, considerable momentum. And then to back up, we look to see where was the bottom, because that helps us in our charts of knowing what time it is, knowing where we are in any cycle. So the low price, the bottom of our cycle, the trough, if you will, is in 2009, and with an average price of 678,908. So, so that's kind of our bottom. And, and then we've seen you know, the price increase, you know, year after year, up until 2018. In 2018, price flattened. We experienced what one might call the mid-cycle dip, if you remember from the chart before, where average price increased just 0.36%. In 19, we see a slight retreat or decrease in the pricing. It went down 4.82%. And then in 20, we've seen a really uh, tremendous acceleration in the price where it's up so far through the first half of the year, 18.66%. What I'd like to do briefly is unpack that mid-cycle dip. The mid-cycle dip, granted hey, before, you, before yeah, we go yeah, to that, if you yeah, don't mind, sure. because I mean, sometimes when people will get to this, they'll see this 18.66%. Let's, before we go back to that mid-cycle dip, mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about kind of you know, what we've seen in the first half of this year sure. that is, you know, dramatically well, affecting this. Sure. And, and what we see there in the first half of 2020, we've seen an, uh, uh, an inordinate, a huge percentage of our sales 
over two million dollars, you know, all double, you know, or go up sixty percent. I shouldn't say mm -hmm. double, but they've gone up about sixty percent year over year. So, in our five hundred and thirty-seven sales, we have about a hundred, one hundred and seventeen or so of those are sales over two million dollars. Right. So it's easy to skew our average number to the high side based on that disproportionate amount. There was seventy-five roughly the year before. So, so that you know, overweighting, if you will, of that high number, high price point has skewed that a little bit. And that is exactly the opposite of what's happened in 18 and 19. Some of that flattening or the slowing of the growth of the average price was caused by the disproportionate amount of sales that were on the low side of the spectrum with water sound origins and other things getting momentum, which we are so grateful for. It's a great product. We're thrilled to have that in our market and, and to be bringing that to market. But that has kind of skewed that. So you could look at some of the other communities and you'll see where their pricing has increased. So again, real estate is very local. It's almost micro local to, to, to get the nuance of what's happening in any particular place. Again, this is just an average. So we can see some skewing of the average price based on what's happening. That's where it's important for you all to dig into your micro market, do this same type of analysis for the area that you're working, farming or representing buyers in. It really tells a powerful story. And you, you know, no one, you know, not many people will do this. It'll certainly help you to increase your level of expertise by doing this in the market in general, but particular to the markets that you're working, little sub markets that you're working. Um, Jimmy, is there anything that I've missed here in this column of average price you'd like for me to touch on? No, I think we've touched on this. We're going to review this and go back to the chart in just a minute. Let's go and just kind of line up. Price per square foot is going to be very similar. Yes. You know, where we're looking here. So let's, um, let's then move to days on market and why this is important for us to keep an eye on the average yeah. days on market. Yeah, days on market is a great barometer of demand. You know, it shows how long a property lasts on the market. So it kind of gives us a sense of the appetite of demand, if you will. You know, you know how strong is the market? Uh, so when we look at this, you can see in the year 2000, the cumulative days on the market were about 170 days. You, you, you know, that's about six months. You know, 180 days would be six months times 30. And that's a relatively healthy market is 180 days, days on market. 2001, you see that 183 days, 2003, 186 days. Then it goes 135, 106 in, uh, in 2005. So that was a very, very strong market. You know, again, we didn't have that much product back then. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so there was a lot of pressure on the product we had. Then kind of skipping down to 2008, 9, and 10, you see where it goes up almost to, to eight or nine months, 255, 273, 271, and continues to trend down 248, 220, 213, 181, 187 in 2015. And then 2019, 150 days on the market, 2020, 155. My guess as to why that's trended up just a little is back to the high price point that has been, you know, um, being absorbed at such a high rate the first half of this year. People came in, they desired to have that property with some privacy or, or some particular characteristics. So some property that had languished on the market went away and had longer days on the market because our buyer was so particular about what they were looking for. And I expect that number will trend down as the year persists provided we you know, increase, have the same type of demand we have now going forward through the balance of the year. And this is one of those things also, it's just like anything else. When you've got a higher price, average price, there's less buyers, which means the typical, what you would anticipate would be that it would be more days on market because there's less of a Absolutely, buyer yeah. pool out there. Yes, so, yes. Um, all right, now let's kind of go to this median price because this is where it gets really interesting. Yes. Um, and this is where when you've taken this and taken the 5.4%, um, and basically you've, you've utilized that 5.4, 6%, um, on a, you know, just basically going all the way back and just running these numbers. Yes. Tell us a little bit about what this looks like. Well, 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 what we did here, Jimmy, is we went back to the year 2000 through 20 and just took the average or the mean appreciation of those t uh, years to try to make it, you know, kind of consistent or flatten the curve, if you will, to say, where would we be if we saw this average appreciation? So if you remember back to the first line, 
uh, first graph, it showed that blue line, which referenced the mean. Right. And so then I checked this mean to see how do I feel about that, and I go back to a historical appraisal group, and they used to put out a publication called the Hutchison Report. And in that report, going back to the 80s, when they referenced beach-oriented properties, they would say that an average appreciation of a home, you know, a beach home along the Emerald Coast, it would appreciate on average per annum six to eight point six to eight percent a year. So I feel like this is a very conservative um, number here, which will give us a solid baseline to begin to understand that deviation from the mean. Where are we relative to that? And how far have we moved either under the mean, which would say that properties are significantly undervalued, or above, where we begin to have to understand and pick apart why that moves. And there's reasons why it can move from the mean and be um, valid, substantiated, and healthy growth. And we'll get into that kind of at the end of our talk as to um, what that might be and, and, and what we get into. But here, back to this column, we, we, we see where our average price in the year 2000 was $426,000. So when we move from there, you know, and remember that in our 18-year cycle, we begin to see that things, you know, compounded at, you know, 5% interest double over 14 years. So when we begin to look at that, and if we you know, watch this. We're, we're tracking kind of, you know, right along in 2002, you know, the, 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 the median price is 473, the average price is 477. Then in 2003, we're at 499 and 515, still pretty close. 2004, 527 the median price, 891, starting to get a pretty Major significant deviation. deviation, yes. Then in 2005 is 555, a million eighty, roughly, huge deviation, almost a hundred percent above. So you know, it's just a, a big move there. Then 2006, you're at 586. You're a million three six. So you're talking about eight hundred, seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar, almost a hundred and fifty percent deviation from the mean. Now we start to decrease their pricing's descending, gaining on it. You're six eighteen to a million two seven. Then to skip down a few years to 2010, interestingly, you're at 725 and 727. So we're back in line with the mean at that point. Then we're 764 and 816. 2012, if you remember the first graph, it's talking about smart money in the market. You're talking about stealth phase, median price of 806, average price 787. Then we move from there, 13, beginning to move up, 850, 889, now skipping down to you know, 2019, if we look there, where we've had significant growth in the average price that's been moving up each year, but we find ourselves there at a million one seven for the mean and a million one one six five. So they're back, you know, right Balance. there, balanced, nice, mm -hmm. healthy place. Then we begin to look at 2020, a million two three three to a million three eight. So we're starting to see a deviation again, but um, we'll, we'll kind of pick that apart a little bit later in our talk. I'm not saying that's out of balance, but but we begin to see this deviation and this acceleration in the growth of the average price of a home. So this is an overview of our chart, and this is a good thing just to go back and review. It helps us know where we were relative to where we are. We can begin to look for these patterns and just helps us to get a little indication as to where we might be headed. All right, so now we've gone through and we've looked at some of the numbers um, on our local market going back historically, literally for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen the chart for 18 to 20 year typical cycle that the book discusses. Mm -hmm. Let's overlay these a little bit and see where we might be, you mm -hmm. know, so we can start forming some opinions on kind of where we are and then um, those that are hearing this can form their own opinion on where we might be in this cycle, okay? Okay. All right, so now we have, um, we're going to go, really, we're going to bounce back and forth if it's okay with you, Price. We're going to bounce back and forth between our numbers and the actual chart. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, where we might be and where this might line up. If we were talking about 2009 being basically the beginning of the next cycle, mm -hmm. for instance, let's just utilize this. 
So basically that would line up with this stealth phase right here, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. So talk to me a little bit about where we are and what this would be time-wise on a typical situation where we might be. Sure, sure. Well, for, for 2009 there, you know, nine or 10, you know, you're, you're going to move through to the takeoff phase is going to be 12, 13. The bear trap or the mid-cycle softening, as I like to call it, would be, you know, kind of, what was that? That was uh, 18, 19, 17, yeah. 18. Let's look if exactly. we go back there, I believe, so we can look exactly. That's so going to be, yeah. This yeah. is where we saw this yeah. price pullback? Y yes, yeah, yeah, there. So, so we're looking at the average price. Go, go back to the chart, please, real quick there. You'll see where it's point. Uh, 0 0.36 in uh, in 18 and 19 was 4.86. So so those were you know you kind of begin to see that softening happening there late 17. I went back and picked this apart a little bit. It was Q4 of 17 when we really begin to enter the softening. We begin to exit the softening Q4 of 19. So so, so that's really when we started you know moving through a more um, aggressive uh, move in price. So, so you see how the bear trap kind of extends over into the mania phase, which we're building demand, and we're moving up from there, where now we've talked about the 18.66% increase in price. You see how the curve is steepening. So we've moved somewhere into there. We're beginning to see where a lot of enthusiasm surrounds real estate sales. You know, media attention is just kind of starting back, even post-COVID, where people are talking about what a strong summer we've had in certain areas and how good real estate's going in certain markets you know in the Sun Belt particularly despite what's going on in the rest of the country so again real estate's local so we're moving up through that curve so you know and, and in the book they talk about you know this uh, this chart representing really they, they use 18 per 18 years but they say here and uh, if I can find the section, I'll quote it. It says, the real estate cycle as applied to the United States has measured on average 18 to 20 years, trough to trough since 1800. Only two world wars have been strong enough to distort this rhythm. So that peak at that new paradigm would be somewhere, if history repeats itself, from 2009, if I add 18 to 20 years, you, 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 you know, you know, or 14, call it 14 to 16 years, would be 23 to 26, somewhere in there could be. But there's some reasons for us here to begin to, you know, wonder about that a little bit, you know, based on what our market has gone through. With so much cash here, so much uh, infrastructure that has uh, been introduced or added to our market, which the cash is not nervous money, so it doesn't have to move. The infrastructure is something that will allow us to sustain higher values because there's more services, more lifestyle components in the area that helps justify, if you will, higher prices. If you move to an area that has one grocery store, you have to drive 45 minutes to go to a hospital and you drive an hour to go to your school, those homes may sell for less money, for instance, than a home that was, you know, within five minutes of a hospital, you know, has um, rest restaurants and grocery stores around you where you have choices and options, great school systems in a very short drive, 5, 10, 15 minutes, good roadways, all those sorts of things, airports, things of those nature will help substantiate our values potentially um, a bit longer than, than the cycle may suggest. But what we need to do, we have to be students of history. We can't discount this. We have to watch and watch pricing and days on the market and this mean, you know, to see how do they relate to each other to help us in, you know, be able to begin to identify when things are getting out of whack. So let's talk a little more about, about that from a, from a valuation standpoint of where we are and what we've had come into our market. We talked briefly earlier about the airport and access of coming into our area. Let's talk about it from a standpoint of the, obviously the ton of uh, school, new schools that have been built. You know, we've seen Dune Lakes just this past year. Um, we've seen um, the college system that's available locally. Um, we've talked about, you know, what, everything St. Joe's doing. You want to speak to some of the infrastructure first and then let's kind of um, go into to the cash portion. Sure. Well, I mean, we're just seeing, as you've, you've talked about, I mean, one, you just back up to the, the amount of homes mm -hmm. that are here. I mean, there's just so many more people 
living here mm -hmm. now, you know, and, and so that just creates a larger commerce for us, a, a larger economy for us mm -hmm. here. You know, we're not as seasonal as we once were. You, mm -hmm. know, you know, this market has become much more a year-round market. We see mm -hmm. people here all year, so there's just, from that perspective, the, the, the velocity of money that moves through our, 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 our area has just increased so much over the last you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 years, just dramatically. And then you have the airport, you know, you have the roadways in Destin, you have, you know, all that St. Joe has got planned over in the base sector plan with just more growth, more rooftops, the, the, our arteries, when you see 331 being widened, 79 being widened, worked on 231, all these arteries are all being expanded because the DOT knows what's happening. Right. The rental companies, right. you, 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 mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the TDC, all these people, we see this staggering amount of growth mm -hmm. in bed taxes, tourism, you know, our schools, I forget the exact number, but this year there has been an exponential increase in the enrollings of students right. in our school. It's just our area has been found. There is just, it is changing and changing in a profound way. We have grocery stores all over the place. We have restaurants. We have so many more services. You know, there's just, um, there's growth happening all over the place, everywhere from roads to people to schools to airports to mm -hmm. flights, direct flights. All these things, you know, are, are, are really changing our area and giving us the ability to, to substantiate a higher average price based on all this value in the land that's been created through the, the infrastructure growth, particularly over the last 10 years. Yeah, and I mean, this gives us the ability when you see an increase in infrastructure, mm -hmm. you can uh, begin to, not dramatic, but you can validate a deviation from mm -hmm. that mean mm -hmm. because you've now got some new um, factors in this market. Yes. On top of that, from an infrastructure standpoint, it's also, you, we talked about it earlier, the leverage amount. You know, what we saw in the last cycle was mm -hmm. that everything was financed. It was 100% financing, negative amortization. Mm -hmm. There was no skin in the game, so to speak. And consequently, when you have a small or slight pullback, mm -hmm. everybody's upside down mm -hmm. and it, it feeds mm -hmm. itself down. Yeah. So let's talk about what we've seen really even since 2010 mm -hmm. um, and the amount of cash that's come into our market. We've just had a inordinate amount of cash. You know, I, I there was you know, it seemed like from 2010 to 13, almost every closing was cash. Yeah, I, mean, I know. You, you know, so that just laid a foundation here that you know we've never had that. It's probably never. You yeah, know, maybe back in the late 90s before this place was really found at all. Right. You, you, you know, we, we've never had that. So going forward, and we have that foundation laid, and there's really been going forward. The banks have been, you know you know, a bit more stringent, if you will, right. to their guidelines and requiring quite a bit of money down for those that do look to finance things. And they've been, you know, um, you know, just sticking to their guns and not just rolling out loans to everybody. I mean, there, there's a little bit, we're beginning to see some stated income and, and this and that, but it is minute relative to, you know, the, 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 the total of what we're seeing right now. We still see a, a lot of transactions that are cash. We have some that are financed, but you're seeing a lot of money down and, and a lot, you know, just solid borrowers. And uh, so we're in a very, very healthy place, one that we can't even compare to 2002, three, and four, whereas you mentioned, I mean, it was just, you know, if you could fog up a mirror, they'd give you a loan. That's it. I know. It's almost like we're seeing the best right now of everything. We're seeing a tremendous amount of cash. We're seeing an acceleration in the number of transactions, or at least the type of transactions. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the chart and look back now, kind of at what we see if we lay this out chart-wise of what we've seen over the last little bit, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, Price, so let's look at this. This is, let's particularly look at this chart. This chart here, tell us a little bit about what this is and what this shows. Us. Sure, that, that chart there shows detached single family home sales from the year 2000 through the year 2020. And um, it looks a lot like the, the previous charts we've looked at. And, and, and in particular here, what I like to do is try to take away any uh, you know big changes. So if we take away that big change that happened in you know three, four, and down to you know nine there, that big spike, take that out and look at the line, look at the curve, how nicely it moves up from left to right. 
You know, that, that shows us that we have some pretty healthy growth going on here. You know, that last little segment there after the mid-cycle softening and dip there, and that little bit of growth there, that's, that's getting pretty steep there, but we've, we've discussed that with uh, quite a bit of the high-end sales we've experienced the first half of 2020, and then also all the infrastructure that we've had added to our area. You know, I want to watch that. Doesn't give me a lot of concern at this point, but we just want to be mindful of, you know, his history and, and not just uh, throw a, a blind eye to that. But, but right now, I think we're in a very healthy place that, that we have uh, being indicated by this chart here. That's the most, uh, that's the one I weight the most heavily out of these four here. And I think it's a good way for us to wrap up for you all just to, you know, have that, to look at that. Know we're in a healthy place, a growing place of values. And, uh, you know, just keep, uh, keep an eye to uh, what's happening. And we sure will hear and we'll keep you informed. So to kind of really put a bow on this thing, I mean, we're in a very healthy place right now. Mm -hmm. Tons of cash that's been in the market for a foundation. Mm -hmm. A lot new, a lot new, uh, more infrastructure. Mm -hmm. We've got access to our area better. Um, we're seeing obviously a favorability. Mm -hmm. We really want to keep an eye on because where are we in this cycle? Mm -hmm. It looks like we're in the front end of a potential little growth spurt right here. Mm -hmm. um, but to be mindful that we want to see that tempered. We don't want to mm -hmm. see overheat because if we do, history tells us what that brings. Yes. So, anything else you want to add to this right now? Does this all make sense to you? It all makes sense to me. If anybody has any questions, would like to discuss any of this, please feel free to uh, reach out to me. I'd be happy to uh, visit with you anytime. Have a great day, guys, and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah.